everyone. My name is Architect Argel Kalanday, and uh, this is the continuation of our first uh, discussion from the Philabus Unit 1.3 Solar and Wind. But before we discuss the topic, we, uh, I'm gonna give you some one of the important or pinaka important values of human when we are in this pandemic environment. So, paano ba natin ma-realize? yung true potential natin as a, as a future architect or as a future as, 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 as a fire architect so napaka simple lang eh so piliin mo lang yung mga taong pinapakinggan lalo na sa social media sino yung palagi mong pinapakinggan sino yung palagi mong pinapanood positive ba yung mga pinapanood mo positive mindset positive na feeling ba yung mga pinapanood mo or Puro negative, puro mga issue, puro mga reklamo. Lalo na sa gobyerno, pinapakinggan mo. Well, sabi nga, na, sabi nga ng isang famous author, si Chinky Tan, na if you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. Lalong-lalo na sa panahon ngayon, pan- pandemia. ba diba, nakababad tayo sa palagi sa cellphone, palagi sa social media. Hindi lang naman naman ng chan yung binubusog natin. Hindi lang naman laman ng uh, kan yung binubusog natin. Hindi lang naman yun. Pati, pati yung isip natin pinapakainin. So, kung ano yung lagi mo pinapanood, pinapakinggan, kung sino yung lagi mo sinusubay ba yan, yung mga pinapakain sa utak mo, yan yung nilalabas ng mga tinasabi mo. Yan yung nilalabas ng mga ginagawa mo. Kung ano yung pinapakain mo sa isipan mo. So, lesson, piliin mo lang kung sino yung palagi mong pinapakain mo. Kung sino sa bayan-bayan, kung gusto mong magkaroon ng changes into a positive one. For me, for me, yung ginagawa ko, nag-declutter ako ng Facebook, Facebook profile. So, ina-unfollow ko yung mga tao na hindi naman talaga nagko-contribute ng magandang epekto sa buhay ko. So, ganun din yung gawin ninyo. So, huwag niyo kumain yung negativity yung buhay ninyo. So, doon lang kayo sa mga bagay na makakapag-inspire sa inyo gumawa late. So, for example, maghulap kayo ng mga pages na nagpo-post ng mga interior design, ng mga, ng mga plano, ng mga successful stories. Mga ganun bagay na. So, lalong-lalo na ngayon pandemya, no? Lagi tayo nakababad sa social media and most of, uh, the, most of the time, ito yung form of communication natin. That's why we are just using this. So for me, declutter nyo yung Facebook nyo. Okay, follow nyo yung mga negative one and i-accept nyo lang yung mga positive ones. Lalong-lalo na sa mga uh, lagi nyo nakikita, lagi nyo nababata. Okay? So these are the topics na i-discuss natin uh, under the solar and wind passive solar and the, and the, the others etc so passive solar so passive solar is a uh, system na nag-i-store nagko-collecta and nagre-redistribute or nagpapusta ng solar energy or minit without mechanical intervention or walang paggamit ng inumang equipment. So, ito ay nagre-rely sa paggamit ng passive solar design. When we say passive solar design, it is re- just relying on the uh, natural source of light and heat coming from the sun. Try strategy, overall strategies natin sa pagdidesign nyo ng bahay or building system. So, essential element ng passive, positive solar are number one is yung flooring, number two is yung mga walls. Because yung flooring and wall are, have many possible functions. Ang um, dalawang bagay lang naman na kailangan natin i-take in mind when we are discuss, designing passive, passive solar is yung pag-collect ng heat and number two is yung storing ng heat. It relies much more sa tinatawag nating thermal mass ng building. So, it could be rock, cement, or concrete, or containers of water. 
So, sa pag So, ang concept ng passive, passive solar have three concepts. So, direct gain, from the wall, and sun space. So, sa pag application pag apply or yung first system natin na i-discuss muna is yung direct gain system from the passive solar. So, ang pag, sa pag apply ng system nito, fairly, ini-integrate natin yung mga yung large windows or yung yung window or opening na makakapagpapasok sa araw sa building natin sa the south facing side ng ating building. So, this is the integration of any openings, windows that is oriented from the south facing opening or windows of our building. So, because yung solar or uh, yung south orientation natin it receives more solar radiation or mas madaming init at light while maintaining yung comfort or yung yung comfort stability ng users at yung constant light na madadama na madadama natin inside the building with the exception of less solar radiation coming from the sun. So, kung i-compare natin yung north from south, yung north kasi is uh, mas comfortable yung light and heat comparing from the south orientation but less yung solar radiation na nang gagaling sa north orientation natin. Ibig sabihin, mas minimal yung heat na nagiging ng building natin when we orient our windows to the north side of our building. Ang goal kasi ng ating passive solar is to heat our building by using the natural light and heat coming from the sun. So, it is much more ideal na i-orient natin yung ating windows. If you are if you are utilizing passive solar design sa building mo, sa top side. So, yung thermal mass or tinatawag na thermal mass sa passive solar design is nag act siya. Siya yung nag act as the absorber of heat or siya yung nag absorb ng heat coming from the sun preventing daytime overheating. Okay? So, yung sun, uh, kung tumama nun sa thermal mass, ang magiging ang magiging role ni thermal mass is to absorb the heat coming from the sun and retain it. Retain it and collect all the heat coming from the sun for the nighttime use. Ibig sabihin, sa daytime, i-absorb lang ng lahat ng heat heat coming from the sun and then of course, when, he, when that thermal mass absorbs all the heat, magkakaroon ng cool temperature within our building because of that. So, it acts as an absorber of heat. So, preventing na mag-overheat yung ating space inside our building by using the thermal mass. So, it is important to note that the south-facing glazing has the proper ratio to thermal mass. Okay, so kung mag, mag orient tayo ng mga stock orient tayo ng mga windows natin to the south side, we have to carefully analyze kung gaano kalaki or ka, ga, ano yung size na yung gamitin natin sa thermal mass natin in proportion to the openings na gagamitin natin sa ating opening na malikaak as the pathway ng sunlight to the to our thermal mass. So, ito yung pinaka-best way in designing direct gain system. So, number one is the concrete floor slab na gagamitin natin sa floor heating device. So, when we say floor heating device, it is the, ma- the most comfortable type of heating sa loob ng interior space natin. So, much more. Kaya meron tayong uh, ground floor concrete slab. So, yun din pala yung isa sa mga uh, utils. Bakit concrete slab yung ginagamit natin in most of our buildings? So, it acts act as a thermal mass for our building uh, preventing 
yung overheating inside our sta structures by absorbing the heat from, from the sun. And the number two is the masonry walls. By using masonry walls at an absorber of thermal heat, it can minimize also the temperature coming from the sun. So, could be masonry walls, container of waters, pwede, or, or other materials na reflective, like metals, aluminums, uh, stainless. So, yun yung mga materials na nagre-reflect ng heat while uh, nagre-reflect ng light while absorbing the heat coming from the sun. Although yung mga, yung north orientation natin is pwede rin tayo maglagay doon ng mga openings. Yung three, pwede naman talaga kasi comfortable nga yung light and heat coming from the north side. But, so, ang goal natin is to maximize the heating in our in our building, we can use or apply the clare story na naka-orient sa south side in order for the heat to in order for the light of the sun to still um, be maximized for heating so by using uh, by using the method of convection okay so it could be supplied to the northern parts of the buildings as well by using South facing clear clear story windows as seen in this figure. Not only it brings morning sunlight to building, it also provides excellent daylighting all throughout <laughs> the day. Trombe, the Trombe Wall system is named after Professor Felix Trombe, who developed this in France in 1966. So you Trombe Wall system consists of thermal mass or wall na inside the south facing glazing na ating building code are mostly oriented in the south uh, orientation of our building. So this system is uh, hindi lang siya ginagamit sa France noong 1966. So it is also applied on, a, on our not uh, mga bahay na kinauna dito sa Philippines like Bahay na Bato. So, if you are familiar with Bahay na Bato in eh, eh, design, makikita nyo yung floor plan niya is made up of 2.30 uh, walls. So, nung panahon na hindi pa ako, so yung hollow block talagang pure, pure cement and concrete and tones yung ginagamit yung last as uh, as wall ng mga buildings ng bahay. So, the uh, wall is you act as a thermal mass to absorb the heat coming from the sun. So, yung thermal mass na ito, tinatrap niya yung solar radiation. So, yung wall surface na yun, painting the tan, eh, pwede siyang covered in collective coating. When we say selective coating, pwede siyang maging, magkaroon ka ng veneer like uh, metal metal surfaces like aluminum or stainless or any or paint materials, preferably dark color materials because dark colors uh, absorbs heat faster than the lighter colors. So, ang goal natin is to uh, make to absorb heat faster for the for nighttime use of the building. Also, the reflectance no, coming from it are much less if, if we use dark colors on uh, in coating at the coating of our trombe wall. So, yung trombe wall, yung kadalatang thickness niya is about 12 inches to 30 centimeters or 30 centimeters. So, it is that thick because of the reason of time lag na napoproduce niya. When we say time lag, yun yung, it means that the heat doesn't reach the interior walls until the evening. So, kaya siya ganun kakapal is pinaprevent niya na makapasok yung init sa loob ng bahay until evening for, for, when, for when it is much more cooler 
sa na yung temperature ng bahay natin or usually yung mga structure na nag na nangangailangan talaga ng ng heater when it comes to evening. So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung mga buildings sa North Pole, igloo, they they also use thick walls for their for their structure or for their residential building as well. So, yung time lang na yun, very important na makapal siya para yung heat hindi agad ang papasok in the daytime which is much more uncomfortable kapag ka kapag ka ang um, yung temperature ng lahi natin is matkos or mainit pa tapos pumasok pa yung solar heat coming from the sun so additionally magkakaroon ng, ng thermal discomfort in the house because will produce mas mainit na temperature yung trombe wall could be made of the following materials could be concrete brick stone adobe or containers of waters So, here are some recommendations na pwede natin gamitin when we are designing a combat wall system. So, typically, when we are using combat wall system, mas recommended na gagamitin din natin yung direct wall, direct main system in combination with the combat wall system. So, as you can see from this picture, this is the Shelly Ridge Grill Cow near the Philadelphia. So, it both utilize two types of active solar design. Number one is the direct gain system and number two is the trombe wall system, as you can see from the picture. So, the trombe wall and direct gain system are two great design options to go along with hand in hand. So, yung wall natin can be full height combined with front windows as from also on this picture na inadapt ng Shelly Ridge Girl Scouts. So, with parapet walls and texture glazing. So, the reason is to allow yung destruction of solar glare inside the house and obtain, obtain optimal heating during the day. So, during the day, kailangan, so, in, this is applicable mostly on the much more colder climates tayo mong bansa no? because they rather use heater than use until cooling sa kanilang bahay so this could be applied in those on those areas but not here in the Philippines so this is just an example so they use solar glare inside the building by using punch windows sa, na makikita nyo sa section later on So, this so this is the section of the Shelly Ridge Girl Scout in Philadelphia. So, and you can see punch window yung nasa above section natin and a trombe wall beneath the floor wherein they can absorb light for nighttime use. Nighttime use thick enough, thick enough for the nighttime use because of the time lag effect that it will produce later. The third one is the sun spaces. So, sun spaces are intended to collect heat in central part of the building while also serving as a secondary living space. So, hindi lang siya nagpo-collect ng heat for the building. This is sun spaces but it could be also be converted into a living space which are primarily used much more to mga colder climates but not here in the Philippines. It is applicable only on the cold regions for the world. <laughs> so this is inspired by the conservatory in the 18th, 19th centuries. So sun spaces are also na-identify siya as amenities or not only an addition to passive solar design. So because most of the time it is used the It is this space that is used as a semi-outdoor aspect of sun space attractive. So most of the people, gusto talaga nila uh, na-expose sa, sa sun, sunlight. So they, they use this sun space to be as an amenity as a living space. So, sun spaces are optimal to be separated at the thermal zone. So, pwede siyang nakahiwalay sa main building mo or nakasentric at mga sa main building mo. It depends on 
on how you orient this. And then the heat is then conducted to the main building via convection through the doors, window, and floors. So the thermal mat of the sun face absorbs the remaining solar heat at the floor and through the concrete walls. So the door, windows, and vent are closed at night, keeping the structure warm and maximizing the heat stored in the wall. So it is also used to prevent the house room from freezing. This figure is where is how the sun faces work in the building. So at the daytime, of course, heat sun spaces will act as a passive absorber of heat. Uh, the, the, flooring, the, the flooring and the walls are thick enough to absorb heat to pour the nighttime use. And then at the nighttime, of course, when it is time for heating, when, it, when the climates are much more colder, they will they will shut down all the doors the windows in order for the heat to be trapped inside the space so yun yung yun yung gamit ng sun spaces so from the passive solar to the active solar na dito na tayo sa photovoltaics by using mechanical equipments in order for us to generate electricity from our building so photovoltaic and active solar collector are similar but they generate na magkaibang types of energy so yung photovoltaic uh, photovoltaic generates ultra high grade energy in the form of electricity while yung solar energy uh, or solar collector uh, generate only heat from the electricity from the ge- only generate heat for the building fuse so in contrast active solar panels generate low grade thermal energy in the form of heat only so new cell or solar cells are materials that convert light directly into electricity so you convert ng the photovoltaic cells to heat or heat coming and light coming from the sun into an electro- electrical energy. Photovoltaic cells are consist of uh, added silicon to thicken the two layers of an equal photon of light that create three electrons in one layer and an external circuit supply. So that so it needs to be given the photovoltaic cells is consist of two layers of silicon silicon layers as seen from this image so kung makikita nyo yung sa, bag- sa bandang ilalim that is the per, uh, the second layer and sa ibabaw niya is the first layer of the silicon the second layer it acts as the supplier of electrons sa mga layer na naglalak nag, 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 nagkukulang pa ng electrons and first, the silicon stores the light or in turn of first layer, yung light coming from the sun. So yung first layer ng silicon, nag store ay ng light coming from the sun and then kinoconvert natin siya into three electrons by using the first or ito yung trabaho ng first layer ng silicon ng photovoltaic cell. And then it passes through an external circuit. So as seen from this figure, and then kinoconvert ng external circuit nito yung mga el- electrons na sinusupply niya sa second layer ng silicon ng photovoltaic cell natin. Because photovoltaic cells are small and fragile in state, yung mga yun ay naka-enclose sa tinatawag nating modules. So yung modules are commonly about 3 feet or 1 meter wide by 5 feet or 1.5 meters long. So, tawag natin this module. So, pag pinadami natin siya into groups of 2 or more, ang tawag na doon is array. So, an array can be constructed by combining various modules. Any decent number of photovoltaic cells or uh, the, the many photovoltaic cells we have 
you can produce any amount of voltage and current you want as long as it is maka-expose to the sun's energy. So, active solar and photovoltaics is the future of energy and electric resource uh, in the impending future again sa construction. So, here are some of the guidelines that we can include in layout within providing a layout or recommendation on the most efficient exposure when we install the photovoltaic solar system. Number one is the liquid product powder with kind of powder in the field. So, this still maximizes the power output as a function of climate. Uh, so, yung tilt na to, it could vary into three. So, later on, ipapakita ko sa inyo kung ano yung itsura ng solar lithium. So, number one is to maximize the annual energy production na pwede natin maibigay sa ating building. Uh, the most recommended na latitude or yung slope ng roof natin varies from the negative 15 degrees latitude kapag ka ang ating gear or yung location natin is of course mostly or na-experience niya yung summer. But kapag ka positive 15 uh, degrees naman ang ginamit natin as a slope of our roof, uh, for our photovoltaic cell, it can be 15 degrees uh, positive for the winter. Third priority orientation natin when we are orienting our photovoltaic cell is on the south wall. So, diniscuss na natin why south is the most optimal for sun's collection of energy. So, because the south receives the most solar radiation compared to the north. So, it's where the constant solar radiation is. So, the third priority when we are orienting photovoltaic cell is the wet wall and lastly is the east wall. So, I don't recommend uh, orienting our photovoltaic cell in the northern orientation. So, para ma-maximize natin yung photovoltaic system natin much efficiently, try natin na yung array of or yung photovoltaic cell array natin ay unshaded, hindi siya natatakpan ng kung ano man at possible. So, if one or of these arrays ay nagkaroon ng shade or natakpan yung natakpan siya, it will lack the required uh, voltage to produce and store electric energy sa building system ninyo. So, since the circuit system ng photovoltaic system, photovoltaic cells are in theory, kapag ka nawalan or nagkulang ng power yung, yung core supply ng power, yung photovoltaic cells mo, ang tendency is lahat ng connected devices mo would go out. And another suggestion is to avoid or lo, to avoid low flow arrays because nagko-collect siya ng dirt. Okay? Pagka nag-collection ng dirt, may hirapan, may hirapan makababa din yung, yung snow or rain coming from the roof. So, it is much possible na mas maganda na mataas yung slope na pinag-installan natin ng photovoltaic cells natin. So, mount these modules at a steep angle to allow the rain or snow to slide off much more rapidly. So, I think from this figure, Figures, these are the southern tip tilt that I had discussed a little earlier. So, dito ay orient natin yung mga arrays of modules photovoltaic. Arrays or modules ng photovoltaic cells natin depending on which, uh, on the location's uh, climate. If, if it experiences hot climate, the latitude for the slope is negative 15 degrees or max condition steep. So, the cooler the climate gets, mas dapat steep yung slope ng ating roof form. Passive cooling is a system that decreases the temperature but does not limit them. This includes air velocity for heating surfaces and to help passively warm the occupant. So, I think the here it does not just uh, help our buildings to be cool, be 
because of the natural integration of openings for uh, oriented on the uh, oriented sa mga prevailing winds natin but also on the, on the colder climates ang kinoconsider nila is to warm also the occupant by using passive cooling devices and strategies na naka-integrate sa mga building designs nila in many climates the combination of passive cooling and heat avoidance is not sufficient so hindi pa rin sufficient yung paggamit ng passive cooling sa sa pag-integrate sa building natin to nagre-rely pa rin tayo in mechanical devices that this uh, suppose you want to be you want your building na magiging sustainable in the long run we will still use passive cooling and heat avoidance strategies sa buildings natin but using mechanical equipment pa rin but minimizing the use of it. So if you want your building to be sustainable in the long run, we have to minimize the use and reliance of equipment. Pini-minimize natin ngayon yung paggamit ng mga maintenance or mga equipment devices and combining it with the passive cooling and heating avoidance strategies thus will save both money for the maintenance and energy consumption and also save the environment. The passive cooling system is an ancient technique na nagumagamit ng just using the natural forces of wind, energy, and heat sink. When pag pag kinumbina natin siya sa pans and pumps, ang tawag na doon is not just passive cooling but the hybrid. It is because of the combination of the mechanical equipment and the ancient system na inutilize natin sa ating strategy. So passive cooling or the hybrid cooling system aim na mapalamig yung building natin or boost yung thermal comfort na may experience ng mga user natin high enough for the inside temperature and humidity. So there are types of passive cooling system. Number one is cooling with ventilation and it is subdivided into two. Comfort ventilation is the first wherein you use the day infiltration evaporation during the day and night to promote thermal comfort. So, ano yung sabihin nun? So, using comfort ventilation, gumagamit ka ng day infiltration or evaporation. Okay? So, yung sabihin mo yung use the natural system of using the windows, the prevailing winds, all throughout the day, wherein mataas yung thermal comfort na may experience ng users mo during both the day and night. The second one is the night flush cooling, wherein pre-cooling the building to reduce the tomorrow's heat load. So, ibig sabihin, we're gonna uh, papataasin natin yung, yung thermal comfort as high as we can during the night para magamit din natin siya during the day. So, next one is the radiant cooling. Number one, subdivided again into two. Number one is the direct radiant cooling wherein cooling means the roof is or the roof structure pulls down via the night sky. So, ibig sabihin, yung direct radiant cooling is parang in-expose natin yung roof structure natin sa night sky in order for that for the uh, uh, surface to pulls down. Directly exposed sa night sky and then, uh, of course, yung temperature or yung, yung temperature, yung temperature mas mumababa because it goes down because of the, the convection that is uh, exposed to the roof structure via the night sky. And then the second one is the indirect gradient cooling, which, is, which means that the building is cooled using heat transfer fluid na na-redistribute na, throughout uh, the building irradiated through the night sky. So, ibig sabihin, meron siyang collection system na wherein yung fluid or yung fluid is then transported into different 
part of the building na once na malamig na yung fluid na yun, uh, i-redistribute mo siya into different parts of the building for it to cool down. One is evaporate, evaporative fall cooling. So, it was subdivided again into two. So, direct evaporation means water is sprayed in the air and flows into the building. So, because of that, temperature and humidity are both raised. So, directly in it, prayan yung building natin ng, ng air that flows throughout the building. And because of that, directly, mas lumalamig yung ating building. And then, the indirect evaporative cooling, evaporation cools, the incoming air and water is applied to the roof to cool it. We let that we let evaporation take place inside of our building. So because evaporation takes place, lahat ng water na nakaslide uh, sa roof will will be able to generate a uh, cool temperature and then redistribute again to the to any parts of the building. And then the last one is the earth cooling, earth sheltered buildings. Uh, again pala, it was subdivided into two direct cooling, so earth sheltered building boosts the heat uh, to the ground. So this technique is used in many dry climates. So the half of earth sheltered buildings are known to have uh, a big barrier because nata ilalim to the new so in that way, yung, yung, cool, yung cool temperature during the night are much more higher because yung convection na napipil natin during the night or yung temperature na napipil natin during the night are much more colder. Lalong lalo na at na-expose ito sa, sa earth because earth is uh, great, uh, great mobilis yung convection niya compared to any bodies of matter. So with that, mas madaling mag-cool yung building natin. And then number two is the indirect cooling wherein air enters the building via the ground tubes. So, yeah, yung air magdadaling muna siya sa ground, out shelter, shelter, and then the distribute to any part of the building via earth cooling. So air post muna siya sa earth, and then once temperature are cold and cold to really distribute it into any part of the building. So, dito na tayo sa next topic natin which is the basic principle ng airflow. The first one is, ano ba yung reason ng airflow? So, yung natural convection kasi ng current, it includes changes in temperature or pagkakaiba-iba in pressure na nakapagpa-generate ng airflow. So if the ground surface is heated, the heat air rises. So pag kumbinit yung ground surface, ang tendency yung, uh, yung heated air ay tataas. Thus, it creates this variance in force while heat air rises. So as it grows, it pulls down and goes back to the ground again when the air is not heated. So it's a continuous process. So, of course, pagkaroon ng magkaroon ng variances in the pressure that uh, the air is generating, magkakaroon ng positive pressure and then the negative pressure. So, once na yung unit natin is exposed to the ground, keep air rising, of course, yung air flow magkakaroon because of the variance of the pressure, magkakaroon tayo ng pressure. And that pressure will, will uh, generate air flow yung reason bakit nagkakaroon ng hangin. So, because of the convection that is happening uh, from the surface of our ground to our atmosphere. So, once the heat air rises, um, nagkakaroon ng, uh, ng negative to positive um, pressure and then it goes back again to the ground one, once the air natin is, uh, and once yung uh, hot air natin becomes cooler. So, there are types of air flow. So, there are primary types of it. So, number one is the laminar. Number two is the separated. Number three is the turbulent. And number four is the eddy. So, one basic tool that identify tayo ng air flow is that, let's switch 
i-airflow natin from the laminar to wrap one one it hits or pagka tumama siya sa mga solid structure or buildings so nagiging nagsuswitch siya into wrap one pag tumama siya sa all the buildings so so yung another example of that is the eddy current naman nag-generated siya generated by the laminar flow naman. So, yung eddy current, uh, yung laminar flow could generate an eddy current because of the high and low pressure of the building. So, naturally, inertia, yung, yung pre-printable ng air jar is naturally the air just goes in a straight line. Another principle is that a moving air always goes straight and the air stream will follow only a curve but never at the right angle. So, pagdaan nyo, sa curve lang, sa curve lang nakapagusot to the curve to follow the current not at any right angle na surface. Conservation of air. So, another principle of air flow. So, sabi, hindi uh, hindi nade-destroy or hindi napuputol yung air flow within the surrounding building itself. So naturally, yung nag approach na air sa ating building is always a straight line. So it, it, will, all, it will just uh, follow a curved line but never at the right angle. So as a result, yung eight air streamline natin should be depicted or ang time lang din lang niya is continuous line. High and low pressures area. So, in high and low pressure area, positive pressure is created when the wind strike the windward style. So, yung kung ano man yung tamaan ng hangin sa building, that may cause a positive pressure. When the wind strike the building's windward, windward side, it makes the positive pressure. Anything that the wind hits are a positive pressure. And negative naman kapag ka hindi siya tinatama. And that side is called, or the negative pressure is called the leeward side. Because it creates the negative pressure. The Bernoulli effect. So when a, when a fluid velocity increases, the static pressure also lowers. So it is known to have this negative pressure as seen from the Bernoulli effect in the Venturi tube. So when one air is introduced through a small opening, the natural air flow will always be at one side. So mapapansin natin na in this figure, when we have uh, produced a small inlet, yun yun lang ang air na openings sa isang tube na meron isang line lang na air flow. Ang tendency is that hindi niya ikokontradict ito contradict yung flow ng air within the tube. So that is called the Bernoulli effect. So naturally, when one air is introduced through a small opening, the natural air flow will always be at one side. So it will not contradict with one another. So the principle is that the faster the air goes up, the quicker it goes. So the faster na mabilis yung pagangat ng ng hangin, the, the, the quicker it goes. Mas mabilis ka sa pagpama. So, the quicker the air goes up, the higher the pressure that will be experienced in the outer floors of a building or a roof bridge because of the high pressure produced from the lower ground. So, ang tendency to natural convection na pinag-aralan natin later on, yung heat air rises so, when the air rises, mas tumataas yung pressure niya. So, pag mas mataas yung pressure niya, mas mabilis yung velocity ng wind. Ang tendency, magpoproduce siya ng mas malakas na, na, na hangin through the upper floor. So, yung sa upper floors na yun, magkakaroon ng experience na much more colder and much more lower temperature compared from the lower ground. And the last one is the stack effect. So this effect exhausts 
from the building by natural convection. So it is known that one once that the ground heating floor is heated, eventually the heated air rises naturally. So this is called natural convection. So it is recommended to minimize the obstruction of airflow by using the stack effect as seen from the previous. So it should be permitted starting from the lower to the higher opening. So the heated air from the lower story enters the upper floor using the stack effect. Then the solar chimney is used to put out hot air from the structure. That is the use of our solar chimney. So, so kung mapapansin niyo sa mga warehouses natin, gumagamit tayo ng stack effect. So, kung mapapansin niyo yung mga yung mga bubong ng na warehouses natin are double label, meaning uh, at one at one first layer is this one and then meron pa isang tatas. So, that is depicted also in the figure uh, above. So, ang youth pala na is that it, 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 it serves or it is serving as the passageway of the heat air coming from the lower grounds of our building pataas so that yung, yung circulation of air is continuous, continuously renewing, okay? So, hindi lang natatrap yung heat air uh, inside our building but it circulates. Thus, having a much more thermal comfort inside our building. So that is called the stack effect. So when using the stack effect, minimize natin yung obstruction ng, ng air papataas. So usually, in, in the more, in the more mo, modern building, gumagamit tayo ng atriums para yung, yung uh, hot air uh, continuous hindi siya na nagsicirculate when we are introduced uh, when we introduce it sa mga modern building, lalo na lalo na mga sa mga uh, two stories or more buildings. Lalo na lalo na kapag ka naturally ventilated yung structure natin. So this solar chimney as, uh, as, uh, as depicted from the from here in the figure is used to put out hot air. So it, it serves as a passageway of hot air to recirculate to recirculate the flow of air into our building. So, heating the inside air will enhance the airflow inside the building. So, once the uminit yung, yung, yung airflow or nagkaroon ng heat yung air, ang tendency tumataas yung hangin. And then, because of that, uh, ma-enhance yung airflow because mas mabilis yung velocity ng air once it when the air rises, right? This will not contradict the purpose of cooling the indoor air. So, the higher the velocity the, of the wind, the cooler the building will get. So, in conclusion, a solar chimney hits the air above the building which draws in additional pressure in the indoor air. And because of this, the, the building's heat impact is also boosted. And now, we are here in uh, the last section of our discussion that is called the airflow through buildings. Again, building pressure the distribution in such facilities is affected by window size, air direction, building pressure, distribution, and interior partitioning. So it all amounts to these small considerations that we have to imply in our design strategy. Yung window size na naka-direct sa prevailing winds, air direction, and then the building pressure distribution or yung interior partitioning ng walls natin in order for the circulation of air to smoothly flow in our building. Number one is the site condition of the top part of this. So when we say site condition, the nearby building barriers also influence air flow through a building plants on site. So yung mga nakapanigid na structures, buildings, plants, ay nagsisilbing barrier din ng air flow. So, nasa sa inyo kung, ano, kung paano yung design strategy na gagawin nyo in order for you to maximize 
the airflow uh, in our site and building. So usually we use our we use the building and then the vegetation to redirect the wind or that redirect the prevailing wind coming into our site inside our building. So we nagamit natin siya as a red redirection or redirecting path for the prevailing winds. Number two is the window orientation and wind direction. So pressure is reduced by 50% when the wind is at an oblique angle of 45 degrees. So kapag ka naka 45 degrees, yung wind direction is na nare-reduce yung pressure na, na tinatamata ng building natin. So because of the oblique breezes, the indoor direction is very much recommended. It is much recommended that your design is much suitable for different wind directions or structure oriented. Ideally, the structure oriented with the long axis facing the east to west is ideal for possible wind direction that functions well with that orientation and because of great exposure from the north and south wind will blow from east to west so tingnan natin kung paano siya i-apply into drawings so usually yung orientation natin is usually kapag uh, with the site permit no uh, if mahaba yung site natin ang pinakamagandang gawin natin is to have a very long a very long face uh, ng north and south natin as seen from this figure. So, ganyan usually yung pinaka-recommended na form ng building when mahaba yung site. Okay? So, it does not maximize yung wind exposure also yung, or, yung or, building orientation natin to the natural light and heat. So, north to south is very much recommended also. And then, since yung dalawang face ng building natin is minimized, maliit lang yung side niya. And then, because of that, mas maliit yung exposure ng building natin sa mga may init na times of the day. Especially the east and west. So, ang tinatabi, uh, pagka 45 degrees or yung commute breezes yung tatama sa building mo, mas mababa yung pressure as in from the figure. So, kapag ka straight line, ano yung walang obstruction to our wind, ang tendon tilt balance yung, yung, yung airflow to our building. So, compared to the 45 of big breezes which produce much less breezes. In the location, cross ventilation is excellent because positive pressure from the windward side and negative pressure from the windward side push and flow air through building. It lies in the orientation and location of your windows. So the pressure and the ventilation are adequate to inadequate because there is more pressure in the middle of the windward wall. There is pressure differential between the entry and exit path of the wind. So, let's see the figure. Kung ano yung sinasabi ni window location. Because of the direct uh, exchange of uh, deep air and cold air between two opposing two opposing openings uh, in the building, nagkakaroon ng much more rapid circulation of air. Thus, Cooling, cooling the interior space quickly because hot and constantly because directly yung pag-circulate ng air sa building eh uh, imagine imagine uh, imagine mo yung tarili mo na nasa gab ka ng parang bahay kubo di ba so yung slats yung window yung bo- yung bamboo walls ng bahay kubo it, it having this tiny small slat and for it for the wind to come in so because of the because of those well, mini small flat tapos yung no, wooden structure yung structure pa ng bahay ko is made out of wood ang tendency is napakalamig ng ng temperature na ma-experience mo when when you are inside bahay ko 
So, yun din yung principle ng Lindo location. So, because uh, because of the direct exposure na meron tayo between two opposing tides of our opening, mas madali yung exchange ng airflow. Hmm. Uh, mas maganda kung naka-orient yung window location natin yung opposite sides because tuloy-tuloy lang yung air dun eh. Where, where, whereas dinimit mo yung side ng, ng opening mo into one type only. So, it could be good also by if not uh, maximizing natural air flow that we will be experiencing pag uh, opposite sides yung window location na po na design. So, some of the strategies na pwede nyo i-adapt also when your building design are as follows and it is also graded from very good to poor uh, location windows so for your own reference. Next are the pin walls or what we call pin walls. Ventilation is increased in the side of the building due to the use of pin walls. So pin walls are used to catch to catch the prevailing wind into our openings. So if in order to maximize the the indoor air flow, the building natin, we have to catch the the winds that is not directly going into our window openings. So, the fin walls are recommended one fin wall per window. So, it is good if it is positioned to hit the prevailing wind and maximize the capturing of the wind instead of deflecting it. So be careful on on locating the pin walls in in di- the direction of the wind where it will catch, not deflect the wind from uh, the wall to our window openings. So pin walls are also used to redirect the air stream in the other direction. It is also used to modify the pressure by correctly positioning it in our structure like what the figure would I'll be showing you in the next slide. The thing from these figures, nakikita nyo kung ano yung paano mag-position or mag-correctly position ng mga fin walls uh, basing from the prevailing wind uh, existing in our site's location. So, very important na malaman nyo kung saan yung prevailing winds na manggagaling in uh, northeast and southwest direction. So, alamin niyo muna yun before considering using pin walls in your structure. So, once na malaman niyo kung saan yung prevailing winds, you can easily design to capture the prevailing winds uh, from the wall na walang openings to our uh, window. So, here on the figure figure presented <clears throat> makikita nyo yung grade grade ng location from uh, a poor location of pin walls to a uh, very good or optimal for your reference horizontal overhang and windows so also the air above the window will deflect upward into overhang about it that blocks the flow of positive pressure from both sides of the windows. So, 6 inches or a 15 centimeter louver overhang or gap will allow the buoyant force of the wind to enter the window. So, the overhang can also direct the air to where it is needed. In from the figures, Nakikita nyo kung paano, paano mag-redirect yung movers ng wind into the openings also of your windows like the pin walls. Pin walls are vertically positioned while the horizontal overhang are positioned horizontally of course. So, makikita nyo kung ano yung pinaka-optimal na position now na overhang walls natin in our window. So, usually, nagkakaroon, pag nilalagyan natin ng gap, yung overhang natin para ma-maximize yung buoyant force or buoyant force coming in 
uh, as a pressure no? from up the wind coming in to our structure. So the the, the greater the buoyant force coming in into our structure, mas malakad or mas mabilis yung velocity ng wind, the greater the circulation uh, process or ganun kabilis mag-process yung circulation uh, uh, circulating in the interior of the buildings. So, here are some of the strategies that are in sectors na pwede yung i-apply sa mga structure ni Ming in maximizing the use of overhangs as a redirection force of wind inside of our structure. So, of course, in maximizing all of the airflow of the buildings, we have to carefully consider yung mga window types na i-install natin sa buildings natin. So, for double hang windows, single hang, sliding windows or doors, nag admit lang ka only ng 50% of wind because yung isang side is blocked and while the other side is open. So, yun lang yung concept ng wild Why 50%? While using a hopper, uh, owning or jealousy windows will exploit the airstream vertically. So, kung gusto nyo na mas ma, 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 mapataas yung vertical uh, speed ng airflow, use these kinds of windows. So, these are the sections of the basement window, owning windows, and the jealousy window section. So as you can see from the owning na red and the jealousy window na redirect, here are the sections and jealousy windows, owning windows, and the basement windows plan and in from the figure. So as you can see, makikita nyo na nag-redirect yung airflow or airstream natin vertically. So, it is more effective to gagamitin natin yung owning window and the jealousy window kapag ka meron tayong integrated na tap effect system in our building. So, it will uh, maximize the, the flow uh, of air flow vertically from uh, the lower ground or building to the to the upper floors of the building because of the redirection process na natatamata niya into these windows. So, while your pavement windows admits 100% of the airflow, may times na if, if the direction of wind is opposite to the to the to the wing side ng, 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 ng window natin or uh, you see from the plan, di ba, dire-direction lang yung wind. But what if yung wind direction is on the opposite side uh, facing the leaf no parang pinaka swing swing panel ng window natin what will be the case so it will tend to be blocked na block din niya yung yung air so it, so it depende siya sa the airflow ng site natin and be wary when considering pavement windows in your design. So, orient natin siya in those places wherein it could be utilized to the fullest. So, kapag create natin ng mga windows vertically, it is much more recommended na na comfortable yung, yung orientation ng na windows natin to admit comfortable here also. So, the airflow ultimate goal determines the order and height of windows. For comfort, windows should be below for the people. In the people in the room. So, this position places the window still 30 cm above the floor as seen also from the figure here. So, this position is very comfortable, a comfortable spot for the people na nakaupo or naka-recline. So, 30 cm above the floor level. So, malamang dalawang ano yun, hollow blocks. So, in tall locations, mas recommended naman na gumamit tayo ng mechanical devices 
in controlling the opening and closing vertically located windows or very high windows that are automatically or manually operated. A word of advice, when you are locating your windows 30 cm above the floor, floor level, gawin nyo na siyang pahabang tile. And usually, kapag ka nagkagawa tayo ng windows that are 30 cm, just 30 cm above the floor level, ang tendency kasi niyan, kasi lalong-lalo na here in the Philippines, it is not recommended because of burglary. So, madali tayo mapapasok ng mga magnanakaw kapag ka ganun lang kataas yung height natin. But ideally, here in the Philippine settings, that's why it is uh, it is stated in the National Building Code that the window location should be at least 90 cm above the, above the floor level because of those winter. So, in order for us to fully maximize the wind flow inside the upper building, gamit na lang tayo ng clerestory window with only window and that can be operated uh, mechanically para hindi na natin naabutin yung windows natin in a much more higher place. So, ito pala yung example ng in the figure shown here is the example ng mechanically operated na the vertical window na mapapansin natin or mag- mapapansin nyo lang sa mga uh, high story buildings because kailangan talaga nila yun because of the exact height ng building nila. The next one is the inlet and outlet sizes and location. So because of the principle of Bernoulli na i-discuss natin kanina, small apertures of the inlet are recommended for your opening. Small apertures mean small openings. <laughs> to increase the velocity of the indoor air stream that also amounts to maximize comfort inside our building. So this inlet controls speed and airflow pattern in the room. Outer placement and outlet sizes have minimal impact on the velocity and flow pattern. While strategically placing the windward side considerably affect it considerably affect the thermal comfort that we are experiencing inside our house just because of that, it is recommended having an equal size of inlet and outlet for our buildings. As you can see from this figure, nakikita nyo yung the 70% lang yung, yung airflow velocity or your air, airflow circulation inside our building when our inlet is much smaller, smaller or outlet is much more smaller than the inlet windows. So, 70% lang. So, it is much more recommended na magkasing laki lang yung sizes of openings natin for our window in order for us to admit one, at least 130% of airflow within our structure. Insect screen. So, insect screen now can reduce 50% of airflow. That, it is recommended na maglagay tayo ng mga screen in or test as or test as seen from the figure that can protect your house from the insect while maximizing the effect of air flow coming into your home. Roof vent. <clears throat> so study shows that various designs of roof vents can increase air flow by up to 120%. As seen from this figure. An example of the of using the roof vent is the BRE building or building building research establishment. <clears throat> so building ventilation is aided by the height of the opening of the cowl based ventilator utilized in this housing development. So this enor- enormous wind vane allows air to be pushed and withdrawn to the building because of the positive pressure on the windward side and negative pressure on the leeward side. Thus, the atmosphere is much more comfortable circulating in our building using the ducting.
So, it is recommended na we these kinds of movements kapag alam natin na yung, yung establishment natin will much more need. The additional circulation is need from the site. So, it is uh, one of the examples is the building research establishment wherein nakikita nyo dito sa picture na gumamit siya ng mga wind beam or the solar thingy na nag act at the na nakakapagpadagdag ng air pressure coming up, air pressure coming inside of a car building and then uh, and because of the high pressure na nag-generate na, na, yan because of heat mas madaling makapag-redistribute na airflow into the upper floors and then through the wind vane. So, mas madaling yung circulation, mas comfortable. Yung thermal comfort na napipil ng user nyo within the structure. Another example of application of the roof vent it is the BEDZ housing development in London wherein they use it a rotating ventilators in their houses. So it is one of the mechanical equipment na na nakakapagpa sustainable sa isang sa isang structure wherein it maximizes the use of the passive cooling technique from the stack effect and then you know you know rotate the na, na, na ventilator na to insert at the solar chimney or the stack effect also on our structures so this is designed by Bill Dunster architect and the peer in charge is the ARUP another example of the application of the roof vent is the animal foundation bell adaptation part wherein the mutilation of mataas na ventilation monitor and then yung ventilation monitor na is naka-orient sa prevailing wind or local breezes all throughout the year so matindi-tinding study to yung nangyari dito so this was designed by <coughs> by Tate Snyder Kimsey, an architect and the location was in 2005 and it was constructed in the year 2005. And another example is the Beating Pavilion in Alaway Garden in Georgia. So as you can see, the monitor screen is the same with the roof ventilators that you can see in the warehouse of Nagel. If not, pwede rin ka i-apply sa mga uh, structure or mga building or mga residence to process natin if possible. You know, ma-maximize natin yung natural passive cooling na meron tayo sa site natin and sa structure natin in order for us to lessen that and our energy efficiency uh, in order for us to maximize the energy efficiency that uh, our building will be having. Once we have applied this sustainable yet simple design strategies that we can apply. One of the sections naman sa Portland Community College na inadopt niya din yung, yung system ng ventilation stack. So as you can see from the section, so it is boosted pa by using the fan inside the classroom. So, Yung, yung pants na yun, you see, pahigot yung ear na, na pinaproduce niya inside. Thus, the heat ear ventilation is much more quicker. No, for circulation rather, sa inside of our building. So, because of that, nag-boost yung thermal comfort of our building. And then, naglagay pa siya ng photovoltaics in their, their roof. Which is, uh, which will create another additional source of energy for the building and then the skylight as you can see kung paano nila in-adopt yung mga certain design strategies para ma-maximize nila yung heat, yung light and then yung thermal comfort inside their, inside their building Next is the use of fans no? Fans in studies Less wind is present at night during the day. So fans are used to boost the wind, consequently wind comfort inside the house at night. 
bag have three purposes. Number one is to drop hot, humid, and filthy air. And a part of this is the heat avoidance technique. So as you, as you all know, when you the colder climate, they, they are only using fans at, at night so to boost your thermal comfort in the room because the colder climate affects the fan because the structure is more difficult to use. Whereas compared from the tropic, we need to use mechanical intervention within our buildings para ma-subside or para ma-maximize yung thermal comfort within our structure. So, fans are used in combination with the stack effect or may be used for, for, for additional boosting of thermal comfort kapag gumamit tayo ng cross ventilation in our structure. So, mas madali yung passageway, mas madali yung circulation ng, ng wind inside the buildings. So, yun. Yun lang yung purpose ng fan. Bear in mind that when using a uh, fan, uh, using fans with oil, uh, what we call this, using heat fans with with uh, air foil blades are more effective than the flat ones. So, ceiling fan is more effective kapag ka malalakas nila and that it moves slowly. Why? Because it causes the warm air to go downstairs by using ceiling fan in reverse. So, blowing, blowing cool air up to the ceiling also pushes warm air to the walls and finally down to the floor. So, partitions and interior plannings. So, sa partition, it is really important na ma-increase natin yung resistance natin for airflow and overall, ma- 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 malimitahan natin yung, 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 yung overall extraction sa ventilation natin sa inside of our buildings. So, cross ventilation is achievable when these partitions are employed in one or single loaded apartment or single lo- loaded tenant spaces the same for the section above in my presentation. So, mas, ma, mas optimal yung pag, uh, paggamit ng cross ventilation and happens uh, sa single loaded tenant apartment building compared sa double loaded because yung air, yung indoor air quality na pumapasok dun sa structure natin is nababawasan because two living spaces yung dinadaanan ng airflow natin, di ba? So, whereas the single spaces is alam. So, yeah. at the same time, the public double loaded corridor is unachievable through this cross ventilation technique because yung na- nakakompromise yung acoustic privacy and other control as well. When designing apartments, it is much more, much more recommended that we use the open single loaded packages because it provides a full range for our ventilation because one living space na lang hindi na daan ng air. Whereas in the loaded homes, lack privacy but they can be altered to single deployment designs. Instead of the transom, we can use uh, clear story windows for our for our single loaded uh, apartment buildings. By lowering the door hallway several levels below the apartment floors, mas mamamaximize natin yung privacy ng ating uh, corridor. But mas mataas na yung level ng windows, wala nang makapinis doon. So this section which is also recommended as an option. So pwede tayong gumamit ng... ng the windows with uh, light slip, slip, light slip um, sections throughout our whole window para ma-maximize pa rin yung privacy within our, our tenant space. And also, pwede tayo mag-provide ng shutter space for the passageway of airflow coming in from our uh, tenant space. So, this is another option. 
So, United Habitation in Martel is designed by Nicole Bouquier. So, it is one of the brilliant examples of cross-ventilation applied. applied. <laughs> so, the corridor on the third story and each unit in the duplex has an opening to the hallway. So, it is located on both sides to encourage air flow. So, using large grease cement, can lessen the effects of wind also. He uses building pillar termed as pilotis to maximize the flow of current on the lower ground. So, makikita natin yung section here on the next slide. So, this is the cross section of United Habitation in Mercedes designed by the public here. So, as you can see, on every third floor, makikita nyo yung cross ventilation is applied on both sides of the tenant space. <coughs> Tapos, hinaximize pa niya yung pag-block, yung pag-deflect or pag-allow uh, pag, pag or passageway ng, ng, ng airflow throughout inside the building by using the brick solid as seen also from the section. So, it's a two-way function. Not only does it, does it provide sun shading, through the building but also it provides convenient airflow in the interior part of the tenant space of the apartment building. So this is really a design by Nicole Gutierrez. So that's it for our discussion. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to message in the discussion. Thank you.